Iceland's glaciers are melting. So Muso Charles wanted to capture how they sound while he still could. So thanks heaps for chatting with us. Can you tell us about this very cool project? <laughs> so this Iceland project got started actually from a video that uh, my mother sent me of some folks in Siberia playing sheets of ice as hand percussion instruments. I was so uh, captivated by the sounds of these, these ice sheets that made all sorts of different pitches high and low uh, that I thought, well, I want to go record some ice. And what better place to record ice than Iceland? The Vatniokul Glacier is where we ended up going, which is the largest glacier in Europe. We, we had an awareness after doing a bit of reading that we would need professional help to actually hike up onto to the glacier safely. This is kind of like extreme sports, but like extreme music making. <laughs> Uh, a friend said to me afterward that, you know, if you're wearing a helmet while you're recording, something cool is probably happening. And some very cool things were happening. Is there a, uh, is there a trick? Is there a skill to drumming on ice? I think the main technique is to listen to what the ice wants to say and find where it's resonating in interesting ways or making interesting sounds. I found this, this tabletop really play like a traditional percussion instrument. Did your hands get cold? <laughs> One thing that I did uh, was to, to take the shorter, more percussive sounds and map them out to my drum set. I, I played the main beat of the song on my drum set, but I wasn't playing acoustic drums, I was playing the ice sounds. I wanted to have some things that very clearly sounded like like they could be pieces of ice. And then some were, were heavily processed and, and transformed. Like this sound. So we crawled down into this ice cave and did some singing. And it's, it's pitched and it's processed in some kind of crazy ways, so it, it may not even be recognizable as a human voice. I pushed really hard to, to book a tour with, with someone who would take us to an ice cave, because I thought the acoustics of the ice cave would be amazing, and how often do you get to, to you know, sit or hang out in an environment like that? Within the track, what is your absolute favorite sound, and what is the sound? We were always on a little bit of high alert, because our guide had told us that Often throughout the day, these large seracs or enormous pieces of the, uh, of the ice tend to cleave off of some of these cliffs, these like thousands of feet tall cliffs. And we were not in anywhere near proximity that we would be <laughs> in harm's way if that were to happen, but we would, we would be able to see it from maybe a quarter mile up the hill and definitely hear it. We reached the top of our hike, the, the apex, and we're about to go into this little ice cave and we were all standing there and it happened. It happens a couple of times as like a punctuation, as like a top of a section. And now people can use that sound and all the others which are available online. Almost more excited about what other people will make from them as well. I think, you know, no one's going to make an identical piece of music. One of the big motivations for this project uh, was to use it as a vehicle to discuss climate change and the importance as an artist, as a sound artist, of trying to make some kind of sonic tribute to, to the glaciers uh, before they melt away and recede totally into the ocean. One thing that I love about sampling and, and about environmental sounds is the ability to just close my eyes and listen to the sound of a big piece of ice falling off of the glacier and echoing through the valley and, you know, remember that moment. This project really made me think about how what we're hearing can also capture something and capture a moment in time. It's amazing what you'll hear when you, when you stop and listen. 